Welcome in everybody. The title of the video did not mislead you. Today we're going to be checking out a Junji Ito styled horror game called Welcome to the Karoshi Club. Now this is a graphic novel video game where we're going to be able to determine what actions our character makes. Are we going to tell the truth or are we going to lie? We have to go through an interview process and the outcome of that interview is going to vary depending on which responses we pick. I'm going to drop the link to this game in the description below and the best thing about this is that it's free. So if you're interested, hop on over to Steam and check it out for yourselves. All Alright you guys, let's get into this. This is a story driven game that does not have a save system. It requires you to complete your interview without any interruptions. Day 1188. All right, someone's calling us on the payphone. Now, you guys, I did want to let you know on this first playthrough, I'm actually going to pick all of the lie options. We're going to be a complete scumbag, but that's the only way you can get ahead in corporate America. You know what I mean? All right, let's get on with this. So again, someone's calling us on a payphone. And here's our main character, Kenji Hashima. The frosty timbre of a woman's voice emanated from the device. Okay, so this person is called Hitome Takemitsu, and they responded, greetings. Kenji said, slight disarray evaded me, prompting a befuddled greeting in return. Wait a minute, are you guys seeing this weird eye on his hand? What is that about? That is really out of place. I feel like that's gotta be a tattoo, right? I'm hoping it's not something otherworldly, but we'll figure that out as we go. Uh, hello? The unidentified voice persisted. I am Hitomi Takamitsu, representing Kenio Industry as a recruiter. A dialogue was scheduled for this time with Mr. Takeshi concerning an interview with our firm. May I confirm, is this Mr. Takeshi who I'm conversing with? Is this serendipity bestowing a gift upon me? It has spanned months since my employment ceased. My search for new employment has been steeped in desperation, yet futile. I've remained barred from even reaching the interview phase. I, I wonder why, dude, you talk like a freaking robot. Nobody talks like this. Maybe he's just nervous, guys. Let's just continue on. Desperation has only swelled with every refusal. There's that eye again. Just keeps showing up when he gets nervous, doesn't it? Dare I seize this unexpected opportunity? Dare I masquerade as Mr. Takeshi to garner an interview? Of course we're gonna lie, dude. What the hell? We are Mr. Takeshi. I don't know if you know that, but that's who we are, you guys. But what then of the real Mr. Takeshi? And of my fate, should my deceit be unveiled? My musing was interrupted by the individual on the line. Excuse me, are you present? I am unable to detect your voice. Can you confirm if this is Mr. Takeshi? A subtle undertone of annoyance permeated the woman's voice. Time was evaporating, a decision was imperative. Oh, we're definitely gonna lie. Yes, we are Mr. Takeshi, we are him. Y yes this is Mr. Takeshi, my apologies for the delay. Acceptable. Ensure you recall our prior agreement that I would return your call post review of your curriculum vitae. Commendations are in order. The superiors found your qualifications favorable. Hence, an interview has been arranged for you. Clearly, this Mr. Takeshi possesses noteworthy skills. Fortuity graces me, bestowing such a fortunate instance in time and space. Dude, you don't have to talk like this. Come on, man. Oh my god, this dude's talking like he's got a Webster dictionary out in front of him. Oh, thank you very much. That was the sole utterance I could muster as a reply. Kindly present yourself at our office, detailed in the following address today. 111 Chuoku, Tokyo. I am not pronouncing that word that starts with the TSU. Heck no, boy. Don't make fun of me. It's not my fault, okay? I cannot pronounce that. Jeez. Are you continuing on? A personal discussion regarding the sales specialist role awaits you. Farewell, Mr. Takeshi. Y yes, goodbye. Oh, look at him. He's so happy. I told you guys, lying always gets you further in life. Remarkably, I've accomplished it. A first interview following a lengthy, barren few months. My apologies linger, Mr. Takeshi. Albeit, for unknown reasons, you did not answer your call. Yeah, probably because he already got another job. Because he can actually communicate like a normal human being. Fortuitous luck. <laughs> oh my gosh, who talks like this? Fortuitous luck, it appears, holds significance in the job-seeking voyage. The only remaining hurdle is to navigate through a successful interview. Provided they do not expel me upon uncovering my falsehood. Sometime later. 
Okay, so it looks like we're on the subway now. And what the heck do you look at this graffiti up here? Actually, there's a few different things. This dude's licking an eyeball. What kind of imagery is this? Oh my God. All right, anyways, we're gonna continue on with this. Boarding the subway, my mind swirled in the vortex of the imminent interview. An oppressive fear burgened within. Fear of unmet expectations. Fear of error. Fear of initial perceptions. Fear of refusal. Fear of rivals. Fear of the unfamiliar. And paramountly, fear of the future. What does the future reserve for me? Merely slumbering once at my former employment has thrust me into nearly a year's endeavor of job hunting. Wow, that's a long time to not have a job. Anxiety and fear have manifested as persistent shadows ever present in my journey. Okay, so there's an unknown woman in the background with short hair that's talking and he's overhearing her, her I think. Did you catch the latest? That doofus isn't waving the white flag yet. My despairing contemplations of job-seeking stark reality were interrupted by the casual dialogue of two women. He's tossed his resume back in the ring. No way, he seriously thinks they'll give him a shot? What's this, his sixth swing at it? It seems they discourse about another individual similarly mired in futile job-seeking. Their discussion exacerbates my own apprehensions. Here's the kicker. He smacked down every time with just a one word no. And oh, keeping a straight face each time, it's a workout. What do you say we place bets on when this loser throws his hat in again? Does he get that with his track record? He's not even scrubbing floors there. With her rhetorical question, she succumbs to laughter. Her companion joins in equally derisive in mirth. A bewildering unease envelops me. Overhearing such dialogue is far from the mental preparation I sought prior to my impending interview. Self-doubt accelerates my heartbeat. Panic looms menacingly close. My surroundings begin to oscillate before my eyes. Desperation for stability, something steadfast, consumes me. Even a moment's surrender would see me crumpled on the subway floor. Composure is imperative. A surge of nervousness compelled me to retrieve my resume. I scrutinize it, weighing my prospects anew. Attempting to conjure positive thoughts, my mind is infiltrated by even graver considerations than before. Is my current opportunity genuinely merited? Hell yes, it's merited, dude. We gotta lie. We gotta lie to get into the job. That's how this, that is how this works, dude. Trust me, you're gonna get a good job and your pay is going to be way better. It's mere luck, isn't it? Is this job truly necessary for me? Did I withdraw before potentially faltering? I don't know. Do you not want to have a job for another year? Uh, yeah, you're going to have to lie, buddy. Let's keep let's keep going. Is further experience necessary? Is previous rejection rooted in this? Am I deserving of employment? Am I adept for a role as a sales specialist? Yeah, anyone can do be a sales specialist, dude. Questions mercilessly bore into my mind, yearning for answers. Answers I desperately require to all of these queries. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're even lying to ourselves. <laughs> Indeed, I am primed for new employment. Undoubtedly prepared to face any forthcoming hurdle. After all, my search for a position has spanned nearly an entire year. Surely a duration ample enough to secure a role within any organization. The key lies in merely procuring an interview. Thereafter, retaining the position will assuredly be less formidable. Yeah, I don't know about that, buddy. You're going to have to do some more lying, so just get ready for that. I, pro I possess the capability. I have the metal and you have the ability to lie. They cannot reject me now, especially having extended an invitation for an interview. Can they? I shall attain what I desire through whatever means necessary. That's what I'm talking about, baby. We're yeah, we're going to lie. The train has arrived. OK, so we're finally at the job site, I think. Lost in reflections of whether my skills were sufficient, I scarcely noticed my arrival at the designated spot. There I was dwarfed by the towering multi-tiered office structure. It casts a modern shadow over its antiquated adjacent building. The vast glass panes caught the sun's rays, shimmering warmly. 
Could it be that I might find my place within these walls? Joining a large corporation has been a long dream of mine. I ponder what experiences lay beyond these formidable facades. Memories of the past begin to sketch out visions of my potential work days. Within the pulse of daily commerce thrummed unseen. Someone, surely, was lingering over a fresh pot of coffee, exchanging words of the mundane. Others might be queuing for their turn at the communal printer, a bottleneck in their efficient day. And perhaps one or two sought refuge in a bathroom cubicle, stealing moments of respite. Such trivialities once wove the fabric of my own days. Now, amidst the job hunt stretching nearly a year, a sense of duality plagued me. Had I truly lived before this interlude, or had I diminished to a mere specter of former vitality? Eagerly, I anticipated stepping inside to soak in the ambience, if only for a moment. Observing the edifice and stealing myself for the forthcoming challenge, a tall girl's approach caught the corner of my eye. Hello, you must be Mr. Takeshi, I presume? I guess this is the representative from Kenyo Industry. It's critical now to maintain the facade I've crafted. Yes, I am Mr. Takeshi. Okay. Her gaze pierces me with a glint of skepticism. Anxiety surges within me, fearful of my ruse crumbling to dust. Mr. Takeshi? Y yes. A shiver of foreboding courses through me. I trust you found our location without trouble. Relief floods in, deflating the tension. Absolutely. No issues at all. I appreciate your... She cuts off my gratitude mid-sentence. You're not really Mr. Takeshi, are you? The jig is up. <laughs> Look at this nervous bastard. Yeah, the jig is up, dude, but you're going to keep lying. Don't you dare give up on lying right now. This is the end of the line. You've seen through me. What now? The situation remains as it is. Your actual name? But, but I misled you. Our firm values drive and ambition. Additionally, Mr. Takeshi has been unreachable. I told you this would work, dude. Hence, we're willing to consider you for the position. You are... Aishima. Kenji Aishima. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Aishima. Follow me, please. My mind reels from the turn of events. Here I stand, having deceived my way through the door, displacing Mr. Takeshi, yet opportunity still knocks. Has my string of luck not yet frayed to its end? So be it. I'll ride this wave as far as it will carry me. Employment is the prize. And I must seize it before anyone else, Takeshi included. Now you're thinking my way, baby. As I shadowed Mrs. Takamitsu, a sense of unease crept in. Abruptly, it dawned on me that our destination wasn't the towering structure I had envisioned. Rather, Mrs. Takamitsu was guiding me towards its neighbor. A dated, robust, eight-story edifice. But why? Where was this dream of a sleek, contemporary workspace? Well, dude, I mean, what are you expecting? You're, you're kind of acting like a sleazeball. You're going to get a sleazeball job. That's, that's what it is. I said you would get a job. I didn't say it was a good job. Mrs. Takamitsu, shouldn't we be heading to the other building? No. A response was brief and somewhat sharp. Did you succeed in this interview? This will be your place of work. My heart sank with disillusionment. The fantasy of a chic new office had been fleeting. Nevertheless, I braced myself to reconcile with the stark reality. As we stepped into the elevator, the ascent to the upper echelons of the building began. Destination, the interview suite high above, where my future hung in the balance. With each floor passed, my heartbeat quickened, a crescendo of nerves. The confined space, the sterile glow of elevator lights only fueled my growing dread. Retreat seemed more appealing with each passing moment. The sluggish climb skyward did little to calm my fraying nerves. Um, Mrs. Takamitsu, is it always this slow going up? The elevator is rather dated. Patience is required. Oh, I see. Thank you. Her assurance offered no solace. The ticking clock became my adversary. Each tick, a loud echo of time slipping away. Mr. Haishima, on our way up, might you share a bit about your life outside of work? About my personal life? Ah, uh, well, there's not much to tell, really. I moved away from where I grew up and kind of lost touch with my parents. 
and work, well, it used to take up most of my time. Never really got around to the whole marriage and kids thing. <laughs> Dude, you're feeding into the insult vibes. Come on, stop. Stop. You got to stop, buddy. This is part of the interview, too. You need to start lying. You have a wife. You have five kids. Um, Billy, Jilly, Jilly, Millie. You got a million kids. You got a wife. You got all that. Just keep lying, buddy. Keep going. I guess I always thought my career should come first and the rest would sort itself out eventually. I see. The reaction was non-committal, inscrutable. Had she hoped for a different portrait of my life? Yeah, um, the one where you actually have a life outside of this. A fabrication involving a family, perhaps. And what of leisure activities? Is she probing for a workaholic's confession or genuinely intrigued by my life outside the office? Uh, it's definitely not the latter, dude. You, oh my God, dude, you just need to lie. Just lie about anything, please. Hobbies, huh? Well, to be honest, I haven't had much time for hobbies. This is not the answer I was hoping for. Work was pretty much it, improving my skills and staying on top of things, you know? Is that genuinely me? Lately, my pastimes have faded into the gray, the job hunt blurring days into a continuous loop. Yeah, I could see that. That does take a lot of time. Have I been adrift in this limbo since the day I lost my job? Intriguing, thank you. Mrs. Takamitsu's facade was her fortress, her emotions veiled. One could but speculate on her true thoughts, but our exchange had its intended effects. The dialogue outpaced the journey, and before I knew it, we arrived. This way, please. We've arrived. Time for the interview, guys. All right, this is the part that's going to make or break it. And of course, we're going to make it because we're going to lie, like I said. I stepped into the nondescript office, its familiarity a cold comfort. It was like every other room, a copy of countless others that punctuate the corporate world. Mrs. Takamitsu positioned herself behind the desk with an air of detachment. Please, take a seat. Sure, thanks. The pivotal moment had come. The dry spell in my career had been lengthy. This interview was a long-awaited break in the clouds. I couldn't afford to stumble now. The stakes were high. Questions loomed on the horizon of my mind. What could she ask? What should I say? Doubts about my qualifications nipped at me. Was I enough? The temptation to embroider my past tugged at me. But what if truth was the better gamble? Time dragged its feet, each second bloated and heavy. I played out potential scenarios, Miss Takamitsu's reactions shifting like quicksilver in my head, none quite settling right. My thoughts, usually my sanctuary, became my tempest, forecasting doom, painting me in the dreary light of future rejections. It was as if I had fast-forwarded to a future where I perpetually searched for work, a self-inflicting purgatory. But as anxiety threatened to overtake me, I pulled the brakes on the runway train of my thoughts. Reality called me back. Miss Takamitsu was right there, the present a stark stage waiting for my performance. Mr. Hashima, your presence here today for the sales representative role is much appreciated. Shall we commence with the questions? Preparedness eluded me. Sure, I'm ready. Excellent. My first question, where do you envision yourself in a century's time? A century's time? Damn, that's a long way away. Uh, a curveball question. In 100 years, the realm of impossibility, right? It was a given, an end to all, death, as certain for me as well. Perplexed, I wondered at her aim. Perhaps this was a test of creative thinking? I decided to play along, a dash of humor might do the trick. Guess I'll be most seasoned expert around, <laughs> by quite a few decades. Very well. Itomi's expression remained unreadable. Now, may I inquire why you parted ways with your last employer? Yeah, we're definitely lying. I know you were fired for looking up My Little Pony, dude. Don't you say a damn word. The truth was a precarious ledge. Best to construct a narrative that absolved me. <laughs> I knew it, dude. <laughs> Let it be an external circumstance. Uncontrollable, unforeseen. The thing is, the company's funds dried up and it just folded. There we go. Yes, perfect. I really enjoyed my time there, actually. Made some great mates and had a boss who was pretty decent. But you know, all things come to a close eventually. I like to think everyone landed on their feet, found new gigs, and the higher-ups hope they settled any debts they had. 
For me, it was just the right push to explore something different. Fingers crossed she takes that well. I've shifted the spotlight away from any faults of mine, highlighted the positives about past colleagues and the company. Maybe this shows I'm a team player, someone who speaks positively of others. Okay. Your employment gap is noteworthy. Please explain its length. Oh, dude, yeah, just lie. Just say uh, your, your granny passed. And just say that you had to be there for like two years. It's definitely not that you're an incel and you can't talk to anybody. Okay, let's get on with this. How do I appear in her eyes, I wonder? Perhaps it's time to cast a little value on my sabbatical. Well, you see, I was in quite a predicament with the surplus of options. Decided to hold off on jumping into the next role right away. Thought I'd take a breather, you know, recharge and focus on personal growth. That little break, well, it stretched out longer than you'd expect. Stumbled upon this opportunity somewhat serendipitously. And I figured, hey, why not give it a shot? I hope that didn't come off too strong. Nope, it was perfect. Good job for once, dude. Seems like a reasonable enough explanation, doesn't it? Success in this interview would lead you to the position of sales specialist. Can you tell me about an experience you have had in sales? Time to think on my feet. Fingers crossed she's not a gamer. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> well, why would that matter? Well, it's not traditional sales, but I did contribute to a project that, that saw impressive numbers. I had this concept, a courier sim in a post-apocalyptic setting. It was offbeat, but it caught on. Sales exceeded expectations and there was a bit of buzz. Some people even called me a genius. <laughs> this is a gamble. Hopefully it'll catch your attention. What sort of critical decisions were demanded of you in your previous positions? Oh, we gotta lie again. Could you detail the most strenuous challenge you've encountered professionally? Yeah, we're definitely lying. Uh, the most strenuous thing you've done in the last year is probably wipe your... Okay, I'm gonna keep going with this. Truth be told, I've skirted such trials. L literally, skirts in your underwear. No, okay, I, I gotta... All right, well, let's get on with this. Yet, I've witnessed peers in the throes of such predicaments. Perhaps it's my turn to don their mantle, entail at least. I've been tasked with some oversight responsibilities on occasion, specifically handling various administrative problems. This also meant the unfortunate duty of letting employees go. There was an instance where it fell upon me to release a hundred individuals. The act of looking into their eyes, understanding their plight, it was beyond daunting. That was undeniably the most burdensome decision I've had to execute. Indeed, the gravest challenge of my career thus far. Irony cuts deep, for it's always been me awaiting the dreaded news, not dispensing it. Very well. It's common for unexpected developments to disrupt our schedules. Such instances may necessitate an employee's presence beyond regular hours. Your stance on overtime? Oh, I love overtime. Work me to the bone. Work me until my legs have turned into jelly. Her question is a hook, baited for a specific answer. My perspective is to always consider the organization's needs. There you go. The nature of existence is chaotic, making it difficult to adhere to even the most basic timelines. This is amplified within a business context. I am prepared to allocate additional personal hours to ensure the company's smooth operation. No, don't just stop there. You are you are ready to give up eating. You're ready to give up crap and you're ready to give up everything, baby. Honestly, work and my private time are synonymous. There you go. Considering the absence of any significant personal engagements, my assertion was surprisingly forthright. We've noted your perspective. There are individuals who, due to insufficient income, opt to take on multiple jobs simultaneously. Your views on juggling multiple employment roles? Oh, I love them. Matter of fact, do you have multiple roles here? I'll work them all at once. Perhaps a touch of embellishment is called for. This scenario is not unfamiliar to me. There was a period when I simultaneously contributed to three different organizations. To some, this might sound overwhelming. Nonetheless, I succeeded in augmenting the productivity of each. Immersed in a continuous state of flow, I tackled challenges with relative ease. In my opinion, as long as it's within legal bounds and doesn't violate any existing employment agreements, such an arrangement can be beneficial rather than detrimental. May my response cast a favorable light on my capacity for adaptability and hard work. Understood. Here's my final query. Your earnings and sales may be closely tied to your bonus acquisition. What lengths would you go to to ensure you receive it? Oh, I will go to any lengths. I will I will murder my coworkers if needed. Especially if you guys need to cut jobs, just let me know. I'll take care of it. 
an inquiry laced with implications. To what lengths, indeed? Is mere competence no longer the benchmark? I'm committed to exerting all necessary efforts. It's less about financial incentive and more about contributing to the company's success and my own growth as a professional. I welcome the challenges that accompany such goals, be it in improving processes, meeting sales targets, or any other objectives set before me. Any other objectives? Her phrasing cloaks a deeper meaning, one that eludes my grasp. We've concluded our discussion. That completes our assessment for the sales specialist role. I have no further inquiries. May I ask about the next steps? I will now proceed to communicate the outcome. So swiftly? That is pretty quick. <laughs> Indeed, the dialogue has provided sufficient insight to determine your fit for the team. I was ready to cross any line, to weave a web of lies if that's what it took, to downplay if it would serve my purpose. At times, desperation is such that bargains with one's own conscience are off the table. It's as if you silence it, you convince yourself it's absent, and do what is necessary to secure your desires. Whether my tactics bore fruit, only time will tell. Mr. Hashima, I appreciate the efforts you've made to be here today. I imagine being thrust into an interview so suddenly was quite the shock. Fortuitous for you to have been here in Mr. Takeshi's stead. It's a matter of perspective. Perhaps it was Mr. Takeshi's misfortune that became my serendipity. Either way, I stood to gain. However, am I prepared for her verdict? You've performed admirably. We find your profile to be quite satisfactory. But I'm pleased to inform you you've secured the role of sales specialist at Kenio Industry. Did I succeed? Her words lifted a weight off my shoulders. I felt an urge to leap with joy, to dance. It seemed unreal. Could I dare to feel hopeful once more? I closed my eyes to savor the triumph, and that's when Mrs. Takamitsu spoke again. You're incredibly fortunate to join us, for we offer the finest conditions. We never demand overtime. Quite the opposite, we advocate for punctual departures and ample rest. Huh? Blinking my eyes, something in Miss Takamitsu's appearance appears amiss. Was this reality or merely my mind playing tricks on me? Meanwhile, she went on. Oh, what? There's no way that's what she looked like the whole time. Oh my God, she looks like she looks like the swamp thing. All right, we'll, we'll keep going. We provide regular bonuses and a variety of additional benefits. I don't think, no, we, maybe we just need to rub her eyes. She's probably fine, come on. The company takes great care of our employees' well-being. Something was definitely off. With every word, her form altered further. But what stood before me moments ago as Miss Takamitsu continued, you won't regret joining our ranks. Oh my God, she's a worm. She's some type of worm creature. <laughs> Kiss this. Oh, this is getting really, really freaking weird. You'll find this place to be a second home with no desire to depart. I already wanted to depart. What in the world? A grotesque creature loomed before me. This wasn't Mrs. Takamitsu. Had my cherished dream morphed into a nightmare? A scream erupted from within. A horror engulfed my senses. A monster! There's a monster here! Calm down, Mr. Hashima. Look at yourself. Are you talking about yourself? What did she imply? <laughs> now this dude's turning into a monster too, what the heck? Oh my god, he kind of looks like that guy from Yu Yu Hakusho. If I can find him on here, I'll, uh, I'll throw his image on there. I don't remember his name though. They were swelling, stretching the fabric of my sleeves. An odd tingling on my forehead compelled me to touch it. What was this? Bumps? Two of them? No, they're horns? I was metamorphosizing into a creature from a horror flick. What triggered this? Oh my gosh, he's really transforming. He went straight into Hellboy now. Is this permanent? What on earth is happening? This isn't how this interview was meant to conclude. Have I lost my mind? Is this an inescapable nightmare? What the heck? It's getting so big. Did I never actually wake up? Thoughts raced chaotically, threatening to shatter my mind in their frenzy escape. I could no longer fend off the encroaching madness and let out a cry. Mr. Hashima, Mr. Hashima, are you alright? What? My breasts were heavy, my chest heaved in search for air. Mrs. Takamitsu sat before me, utterly ordinary. You seemed distant after I announced your successful interview. So it was all a figment of my imagination? Was the fear of failure that profound? I'll notify the head of sales. He's expecting you in the office. Please go meet the team. It's early for your first day, yet a perfect time for introductions. The eerie vision of Mrs. Takamitsu as a repulsive creature lingered in my mind. Thank goodness it was just a dream. Understood. Thank you. Mrs. Takamitsu directed me to the office. 
Stepping inside, I breathe a sigh of relief. Wait a minute, what the, what's going on back here? This dude's face is coming out of the screen. I had made it. Turning to my new colleagues, I said, Hey, I'm Kenji. Oh, what the heck? Wait, so was it true? He's holding a giant bug. Ugh. And that was welcome to the Karoshi Club, you guys. So I think, yeah, that was the good ending. I think a good or bad ending. I don't know. I'm guessing good. He got a job, so he ended up going where he wanted to. All right, you guys, so I'm going to run that back. I'm going to try to get the truth version of the ending and we'll see if the outcome's a little bit different. Let's go. Okay, you guys, so I just got through telling the truth about everything and this is the outcome. She's she's basically saying, do you even grasp the gibberish you're spouting? He's been talking nonsense this whole time because we've been telling the truth and she can see who we really are now. The previously icy Mrs. Takamitsu's tone had abruptly turned tinged with, with an unsettling fervor. Excuse me, what are you implying? I've been meticulously monitoring how you respond to my inquiries, and I must express my disappointment. It was a catastrophe. Tell me, how can you be so unbearably truthful? You didn't even fib once, did you? And you genuinely believe that this honesty would aid you? Huh? What's going on here? I was completely baffled by the unfolding events. Mrs. Takamitsu seemed to grit her teeth with every word she spoke as if each sentence which she formed was a laborious task, as though, as though it pained her physically to utter these statements. Mrs. Takamitsu, is everything all right with you? Is everything all right with me? What do you think, hmm? I was at a loss for words. Decided to try a fresh tactic this time, did you, Kenji? You know how I detest all this. What did I do to deserve this? Why must you treat me this way? What the heck? What is going on? What is she trying to say here? To confess my confusion would be an understatement. Something drastic had happened to Miss Takamitsu. I wasn't even sure I was dealing with Miss Takamitsu. It was as if she were possessed by some sort of monster. As the thought crossed my mind, I noticed her transformation wasn't just behavioral. Her visage was distorting. A new set of eyes began to emerge from her flesh. She resembled more a gelatinous abomination than a human being. This is your doing. Okay, wait, she's turning into the same monster though? What the heck? Petrified, I witnessed the impossible become reality. Meanwhile, Miss Takamitsu, or whatever had she become, loomed closer. Thank you for coming in. We'll be in touch. Congratulations, you've passed the interview. You're hired. Her words dripped with irony as she stretched each syllable. Did you expect a different outcome, Kenji? Surely not this one. Her laughter was deafening and manic. I was in shock by the unfolding nightmare. I needed to flee her office, yet my body refused to cooperate. The situation was sheer madness beyond comprehension. As my mind raced for an escape, I failed to notice her encroaching presence. She bore no resemblance to the woman I had met. Kenji? My name emerged from her, once a symphony of human intonation, now a guttural snarl. Paralysis gripped me. Action remained a distant concept. Could this be the conclusion of my tale? If she's not saying anything. Oh, Kenji, you seem even more appetizing than usually. What the heck? <laughs> than usually? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, you guys, so that was the other ending if we told the truth the entire time. One interesting thing I picked up on was when we did tell the truth, she was kind of saying like, oh, like, did you think this would result in a different outcome? Like, it's always going to happen. And then she also said that he looks more appetizing than normal. So is he stuck in some sort of weird loop where he just continuously meets this person? Maybe that's just the creators uh, putting a spin on like what the interview process is like for these people. Like you're just constantly interviewing with the same 
types of people, same personalities, and they're looking for a specific thing. And when you don't lie or don't do what they're anticipating, it's like they're mocking you like, oh, did you think that was really going to matter? Like it's still going to you're not getting the job or you are getting the job or, you know, whatever, however you want to interpret it. But yeah, I thought this was really cool. It was kind of long. And I will say one big critique I have is that some of the words are actually difficult to read, almost like they're tongue twisters. So there would be like words that were next to each other where normally they're not difficult words to say. But the fact that the two words are right next to each other uh, or even in the same sentence, sometimes they would be difficult to say because your tongue wants to use letters that are in that first word. It's almost like it tricks your brain. So I guess that would be my one critique is that I felt like some of the dialogue, if they had tried to read it themselves just out loud, I think that would have made a big difference. Um, and I, it's not bad dialogue. I actually think it, the dialogue is specific to the characters, which is super interesting. They did a really good job. It's just that some of the words when they're next to each other like that makes it difficult to read. All right. Anyways, you guys, I yapped on a lot, but I did enjoy this one. It is free if you want to check it out for yourselves. Maybe you could mix and match some of the truths and some of the lies to get a different ending. Or maybe there's just secrets that I don't even know about. But that was Welcome to the Karoshi Cub. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're still here, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, share this video if you are a real freak of nature. And uh, yeah, all right, you guys, I will see you all in the next video. Peace.